No need to panic yet. You think you grab Reynold, Reynold by the shoulder and gesture for him to be quiet till he stand motionless for a few long seconds before you hear a low whistling sort of breathing. Reginald must have heard it too, because he raises a, his sword defensively. A series of snorts is followed by several goblins with green tinted skin charging out of hiding towards you. With an arcane word and a flourish of one hand, you send a bolt of fire. fire the leader of the charge who drops to the ground thrashing in flame. Reginald hacks down another with his sword. The remaining three run away, whooping and yipping. Then their cries are joined by others from the dark forest all around you. Many calls from far, too many goblins to fight toe to toe. It is a hunting party, tracking wild game, I wager. Human is a delicacy, much better than meeting, Reginald says. You got the two dead goblins on the ground. Dead goblins are worth ten gold, pieces per head in the city. Luckily, you don't need to carry the heads around. The city authority authorities will accept their left ears. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Get the ears, get the ears. You exclaim as you pull out your razor sharp dagger from your butt. For a second, your sometimes slow witted war sidekick doesn't understand as you start sawing away at the first ear. He gets the idea and fishes out his own dagger. Then you have a bloody goblin ear stuffed into your pocket, and the original has one of his own. Nasty, very. I have a 10 gold pieces on nearly 6 months of wages to a common laborer, so you're willing to take the hit. But now, Reginald asks, searching the are excellent places to hide in the forest. You can just make it until morning. True, the goblins may have drops, dogs, and their own sense of smell is keen, you say. We might climb a tree then. That would at least be defensible, Reginald suggests. You wish to be treed like a fox with goblins barking underneath? You wish a position that is both defensible and allows some freedom of movement. We should hasten to castle in... Furnace, it is near and we could fortify ourselves behind those walls, Reginald says. Your friend, it is a fortress, yes, but inhabited by one. God knows what man of creatures may have taken up resident and have run over for you run over the years. Hmm. Hmm. Sounds like a good idea. But there's dogs. And I have a. Yeah, I'm not going to. Yeah. Castle Invern, Inverness is near. Let's take refuge behind those stone walls, you say. Goblin hunting calls echo from all around in the forest as the two of you dash up the path a hundred meters or so, where you find a, a fork in the road. The path to the right appears to be seldom. You since it is nearly overgrown, the path to the left clear, and you think you can see firelight down that way. 
Could this fire belong to the goblins, or if you're lucky, is it the campfire of another friendly adventuring party? Mm. Let's see. <laughs> Bold used to fought never once. Oh. So, eesh, my max decreases by one. So it turns out the fire does belong to goblins. What did you expect? You're in goblin country after all. Come up to a clearing with two goblins staring hungrily at the rack of mutton sizzling over fire. Apparently, these guys are more keen on guarding their next meal than joining the rest of their hunting party. Before you can decide whether to turn back or kill them, one of them spots you and screams out. But you know, shoots this one with his bow while others run off. What a cowardly lot they are. You run back to the fork in the road and they head toward the camp. On the way, you hear a whistle in your ear, then another, and then feel a sting just above your hip. They do have bows. The wound isn't the wound isn't bad. It's a small arrow shot by a weakling, no doubt. You pull without losing stride. After a minute of stumbling down, what is the best described as a game trail? You see the shadowy husk of the ruin in the moonlight ahead. Unfortunately the battle cries of your pursuers are closer than ever. And when you look back over your shoulder, you see glowing eyes. Until you turn on a boost speed and soon the outer wall of castle looms before you. It is about 10 feet high and crumbling. You realize with horror that there are no holes on the side that are large enough to fit through. Meanwhile, original, a faster runner than yourself has disappeared around the north corner of the wall. A short spear whistles past your head. You look back and see at least four of the little beasts. Die for people, man. You shut as you turn to face your pursuers. They are not far behind. You only have to wait a few seconds before they are in range. You shut and spell trigger word, and you go to flame around from your outstretched hand. Dolphin four goblins. They scream shrilly for a moment, then fall suddenly as their flame bodies crumple, crumple to the ground. No more goblins are visible, so you run to catch up with Reginald. As you run, as you run the north side, you see him above this a section of partially crumbled wall. He helps you scramble over the top and onto the rotten gangplank. He grins at you and nods in the direction you came from. Guards, you have struck terror into the advance party. However, they will call for reinforcements. We have the wall. The question remains, can we hold it? We go in. You point to the castle keep beyond the courtyard. The castle is three stories tall, or at least it had been before most of the top floor collapsed. The second story is barely any better. The fortress is as lifeless and as still as a painting. Nevertheless, you wonder if anyone is looking back at you from the dark arrow slits of the first for, fl for ugh, the first floor. Hmm. Gods know what's in that castle. Let us fight only one enemy at a time, he says. Soon the forest around you thought to be clearing instead of eyes. It is difficult to count them as they appear and disappear behind the trees, but you guess twenty or more. Surely they will attack from all sides at once, says Reginald, as they can see at night like we can in a day. You can see the long dry grass of the courtyard below with some lamp oil. You could start a fine brush fire down there. The light of it could perhaps even the odds on these nocturnal creatures. You could even cast a spell upon the fire to create a blinding flash, but you're not sure you want to leave your wall to carry out such an unconventional plan. They may attack while you're away, leaving only Reginald to defend the walls. You wonder how long the goblins will take to muster their forces. Your question is immediately answered as you hear a bell cry, high-pitched fears and seemingly on the edge of panic. It erupts from the forest as the tide of little green owl evil eyes surge forward. Hmm. Without the moment of to lose, you jump down into the courtyard, empty a flask of oil onto the, grad, onto the dry grass and light it. The fire spreads rapidly. You ascend the ladder against the wall to rejoin Reginald. God help us. They come from all sides, you shout. Reginald does not answer as he works his bow. Thrum, thrum, goes the string. 
Soon several of the goblins have scaled the far wall. Two have dropped down into the courtyard while another charges upon the rickety battlement and walk away toward you. Others follow and then still more from the east and west walls. You can see them clearly thanks to the courtyard first time. You dare not wait any longer. Original, close your eyes. You shout and let loose the spell. Crack, you see bright pink. Behind your shut eyelids, the fire has become a brilliant flash, a brief pulse brighter than full daylight. You wait a second. It will take that long for the flare to let die down. Now the little monsters are shielding their glowing eyes and screaming. One of them stumbles head headlong off the battlement. Kill them all and be quick about it. They will not be blind for long. You shout as you reach into the folds of your rope and pull out the dagger. Reginald slings his bow and unsheaths his smith long sword. The goblins are still standing, are now waving their short swords and spears, blinding blindly in front of them. Reginald effortlessly bats these weapons aside with his long sword. With a single mighty cleave for a creature, he cuts the goblins down, one after the other. For you, using a blade to dispatch for it is a demeaning and dangerous. Blind or not, those vicious little monsters will slash and bite for their lives. Nevertheless, a long knife requires no mana. So you, so you quickly get to work. You jump down into the courtyard where you have more room to maneuver. You run behind each goblin, thrust in your dagger, and, and immediately spring backward before your victim has a chance to swing at you. You smile. You smile at just. You smile to yourself. You're really on a roll. But I hate goblins, you think, just as you consider sending a sound to better mark your blind quarry. More of the little beasts come, a lot more. They scud over the walls like cockroaches. To the castle you shout, once across the courtyard, you open the large wooden double doors which shriek on rusty hinges. Inside, Reginald slams and bars the doors. The entrance, the entrance chamber is large with a high vaulted ceiling. The stone walls are cracked and flaky. The ground is strewn with loose rubble. The air is stale and aside from the double doors behind you, there are closed wooden doors on the north, east and west walls. Near the north door, there is a stairway going up but it is blocked by rubble. It is not long before the front doors be begin to rattle violently through a nearby arrow. Slit you, slit you can see glowing eyes and the glint of axes chopping away at the door. You are not sure how long the bar barred portal will hold them. Reginald wants to hide deep in the castle. On the other hand, this place smells of death. It might be prudent to take a few seconds to investigate the rooms. Hmm. Uh, let's go. Reginald opens the northern door and cast light of your Latin the light of your Latin streams. Into the doorway to reveal a huge muscled monster stooping the over. He holds a massive spike club in one hand and, mo and a modern sized rock in the other. He bursts into the room, driving Reginald back. Neville's tongue, it's an ogre. Reginald shouts. The ogre slams his club against Reginald's shield, sending him careening into the wall or plunging into the wall. The ogre then throws the rock it was holding at you, clipping your shoulder, spinning you, spinning you completely around. The ogre, the ogre smiles a jagged tooth grin and hands down to pick up another rock from a neat pile on the ground just inside the doorway. You need to act fast. Hmm. Let's see what happens right there. You read someone, you read someone that always all the mighty and strength and stench are weak minded fools. Quickly you cast your charm spell and point to the ogre before he has a chance to attack. His eyes slits of rage only a moment before, now widen and he gives you what you suppose is an ogre smile. Your transpecies courtship is interrupted as the front doors of the castle burst open like a tidal wave crashing on the beach. A heap of goblins fall into the room, creatures one on top of the other. A chorus of glee erupts from their fang mouths. The ogre roars in rain, throwing his rock at the first goblin, striking it in the chest with such a nasty crunching sound that you are certain the goblin will never get up. 
he decided it's time to leave the, this party. You and Reginald nearly collided in your haste through the eastern portal. Once through, you slammed the door closed. From the entrance chamber you just left, you hear goblins yips of triumph turn into screams of terror that are immediately drowned out by an earth-shaking snarl. Next, you hear the sharp slapping of flesh against the fla flesh against flesh and the wet sound of bodies ripping apart. You run from one room to the next. The particular charm spell, the particular charm spell you used on the ogre only lasts a few minutes, and so you want to get away from the monster before then. The ogre is not much of a house housekeeper. The castle is full of giant car cobwebs and broken furniture. Finally, you enter a larger room, a dining room, as evidenced by a long wooden table and two fireplaces. You motion to Reginald to stop, and you both listen. Faintly, you can hear the far-off sounds of battle from behind you. you. Can't leave that way, you think. Of course, you really want to leave anyway. There may be treasure about. Your steps should slow to a crawl as you try to make up your mind to do. Just then you hear something else, labored breathing and his and his that crying. So Chloe and Luke, you think to yourself as you take the lead. You quickly you quickly realize that the sound seems to be coming from this very room. You creep over to the other end of the dining hall and see a young woman sitting on the ground, chained to a fireplace, rocking back and forth and sobbing. Her cries break up and she looks up at you with an expression of fear that quickly sends to surprise. Who who are you? she asks. You tell her your name. You tell her, her your names and that you are here to smite evil while you're making your fortune. This brings a smile to her face. A pretty smile, you suspect, although it's hard to tell under all dirt smudge on her face. She gives us she gives her name as Sibeth. Siba. Ooh. Siba Sibeth. Uh, and says there is a key to the chains on the table. Sure enough, besides cracked and dusty china, is a small brass key. As you said about unlocking her, she tells you that she is a merchant's daughter who was traveling with her father's trade caravan, trade trade caravan, when it was attacked by a mighty ogre with a small band of priests of an e of an evil god wearing dark cloaks. Both of her party not killed in the initial attack were taken prisoner and chained up in this room one by one they were taken away by the priest never to return they took my father Sibath Smith no doubt he is slain but I must try to find him will you help me you ask if you ask her if she has any idea where her father or others might be but she knows little of the rest of the castle Reginald takes you aside and says how to be take to take her to safety and then look for a father on her own. She'll be in danger of tra traveling with us. You agree that having some half stuck unarmed merchant started tripping along behind you will only get her killed. But where's safety? Last time you checked, the courtyard was crawling with goblins, and according to her, the castle res residents are not very good hosts. Hmm. Siba <laughs> seems like a nice enough young woman, but as a merchant star, she is not a very good, good addition to the adventuring party. So you are eager to escort her out of the castle as quickly as possible. Between Reginald's clinking chamber arm and Siba's incessant sniffling and muttering about her father, the three of you are not the stealthy party you wish to be. After some searching, you find a hole in the wall of the castle large enough for a human to fit through. Reginald gives you a boost up the, the, to the hall and you look out. Neville's tongue, you curse in, you curse in your head. Glowing eyes dot the courtyard outside. You get down and tell us the bad news. As you're describing what you saw, there's a sudden jolt of numb, numbing cold in your back. You cry out in pain and turn to see a cloaked man barely visible in the light cast by the shuttered lantern in his hand. He's pointing at you with his other hand. Perhaps this is one of the evil priests Siba spoke of. As you, sl as you slam back against the wall, Siba cows in the corner. Reginald unsheathes his sword and changes and charges. The cloaked man, cloak man runs. By the time you come from the pain and stand up, Reginald's walking briskly back into the chamber. That sneaky devil eluded me, he says, and then curses. 
I would bet my last chopper he's off getting allies to come back for us. We must move on, you, you say. As you hasten away from that wing of the room, the three of you agree Siba should hide for now. There are a ton of things, a ton of hiding places in this room. You find a nice pile of rubble for her to hide behind several rooms away. Stay still and quiet here, we will return. Well, if you do not return by moment, escape as best as you can, you instruct her. Clever, Reginald says as you leave her. If her abductors find her missing, they will not expect her to remain in the castle. With luck, they'll leave the castle altogether to search, and we can and we can explore unhindered. You say with a smile. The 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 castle is quiet and dark. You walk into a wide hallway that branches into directions. One direction is covered in a thick layer of dust, while the other is covered in footprints. You. You decide that it would be wise to get a lay of the land before looking for any trouble. Despite the faint smell of rotting flesh from the dusty hall, you decide that it would be, it would be wise to go this way first. Less monsters, more treasure, or at least you hope. You have kept your lantern hood, hooded, only allowing silvers out of light out. After all, you want to remain stealthy. The way is dim, however, and you find yourself tripping and over rumble tripping over rumble and the odd piece of furniture. Ahead there is a stench of rot, making you wonder if there might be something terrible hidden in the shadows. Too bad you can't see in the dark like goblins. Since you, since you appear to be enter, entering a vacant pile of castle, you expect your light will not attract any attention. Hmm. As you move along, the cobwebs thicken and thicken. Spider, original chaos. You point your sword up the ceiling. There is an enormous hairy spider suspended by a mass of yarn thick webs. The webs are dotted with a small silky cocoons you, sus you suspect might encase rats or other small prey. With trembling fingers, original sheaths his sword and in unslings his bow. He takes in a big breath as he fits an arrow. Draws back the string and, uh, and fires. The spider flails its long legs for a moment and then drops out of the cobweb onto the floor with a thud. The two of you move on, taking extra care to wash the ceiling. <sighs> I think I'm done now. I'll read this later.